Hi. Demystifying hand-painted or hand-dyed yarns is one of my most popular videos. And today I'm prepping for a show, so I'm going to dye up some little bits that I have to show you that in action. Let's get to the fiber, to the fiber. So just like an artist does, I layer up colors. So I have this game here a little bit. Those are my four ties that I was talking about and demystifying. So that's my start and finish in the round of this skein. One of the techniques I also talked about was dying straight across, dying in the round, some speckled, some different techniques. So I picked up, picked out two colors, and I'm going to put my gloves on, because if not, I'll be every color of the rainbow here. So, always pick two complementary colors, because if not, you'll get mud. In this case, I'm going to show you dyed across the skein, which is clearly dying across. Now, when I told you before in demystifying hand-painted yarns, you cannot stop the dye. Can you see that? It's just running. And if I push into it, I can get it to run a little bit more. And I'm not sure of any hand painter or hand dyer that actually just sits there and measures because the dye runs. So I'm just eyeballing it. And of course, again, the yarn is wet, has to be wet. And here's my complementary color. And I'm going to go right in between. And not all fiber takes dye the same way. Some takes it faster than others, such as um, wool and animal fibers really take on the dye, whereas plant fibers take a little bit longer, such as Pima cotton and linen. Those types of fibers have to sit quite a while in the dye in order for the dye to take. So this is what I meant by dyeing across the skein. So even though this is a little skein, it still applies to a full skein. Now, since I'm using professional acid dyes, I did use a Morton, which is white vinegar. And as you can tell on the bottom side from where I was placing it, the colors almost run together, even though I didn't use that much dye. But it's gonna look pretty. So now this will go on top. I have like a splatter screen or a steamer tray and steam set this in to get that set in. Now, another technique a lot of people use, and you'll see this frequently, it's another skein, same color I dyed out concept wise. They'll take, that's my four ties, that's start and finish. This is my end loop. And what they'll do is you'll see, they'll dye up a section of it. And that's why you protect your surface. This is a anti-stain proof plastic outdoor indoor table that I use and what's commonly po popular is speckles and here it doesn't not look like I do much just by taking my fan brush but watch when I put my hand down on it. Because the yarn is wet, see how much I got on there? And it doesn't look like I had hardly any on there. 
And again, the Morton is white vinegar. So I did soak this skein prior to doing this in white vinegar. So that way here when I speckled this, to show you two different variations, on this color and what I'll do is flip it around. Give it a little tap. And we'll get the pink out here. And there you have it. That is another way, because Tsunami is actually dyed like this, one of my colorways that everyone loves. And one end is dip dyed, and the other end is dip dyed in a different color, and then I blended the two together. And again, this is ready to go off to get steamed and set in. Normally when I dye something like this, I don't want it to mix, mash together. So especially when you're dyeing multiple skeins, this can get tedious because they're much larger in circumference and also a lot more strands per round since this is fingering weight. All right, well, let's go get the other one. Okay, now we got a different skein here. And I have it placed in a circle for a reason, because we're going to dye this one in the round. In the round means sections are dyed. So this is my four ties here. And so a section is dyed there. And say if you're going to do it in quadrants, a section is dyed here and straight across here approximately, and then one at the bottom. And I'm going to reuse this pink here because I can. And go in between each of my sections that I dyed with the other color. Yeah, that one. You'd be surprised. This color looks like mud when it goes on, but it's pretty cool when it's done. And that's how you would have a dyed in the round skein. So when you're knitting or crocheting with this skein and your starts here, you're gonna start your first color, you're going to go a few stitches, then you're going to start again another color and then back to another color and consistently go around the skein because when it's wound up or rewound, which I'll show you in another video following this after these are all dry, so that way here you can kind of tell how different they look. And any of these techniques could be put into numerous numerous ways, versions. You can have a, a skein that's dyed half like this and then the ends dyed differently and vice versa. So I have one more to show you. Let me go get it. All right, last one. This will be a true hand painted yarn. Um, a true hand painted yarn can start off at any of the previous that I've shown you. However, this up a little bit. The difference is it could start like at the ends and ends, you know, and it could be quadrants, it could be here, it could be there, but notice that I'm not getting all the strands. I'm leaving some of them the base color, and that's on purpose. That is what a true hand-painted yarn would look like, and it would just have little bits of pops of color here and there, and not total saturation in spots. 
So a true hand painted yarn will give you a lot of variegation in your projects. So if you pick up a skein that's truly hand painted, like I said, you'll it's easy to distinguish because not all of the strands are going to be uniform. And that lends to the uniqueness of that yarn. And since this is a tiny skein, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to get these all steam set in and I'll be back. There I have it. My, they're very hot. And I know what you're thinking. Like, open these up, let's wash them, let's see how they look. But unfortunately, the way dye works, even though they're steam set in, the dye molecules are still working until it's completely cool. And these just came off the pot. Can't touch them yet. So stay tuned for the next video. I'll have these washed in Dawn dishwashing liquid. Simple and clean. Uh, simply clean or whatever it is from Dawn. So I don't have so many suds. And I'll have them on the drying rack and we'll take a look at them. So if this is something that you like and interests you, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you aren't already and hit the bell to get notified when I post a new video. I'll see you in the next one.